It's time for Nick's last challenge. I heard a blush. I think he's about to come out. Hi, Nick! No, 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 no. I'm Nick, I am done with you these like challenges. You like skateboarding, right? I do. Did you wash your hands? <laughs> Great, let's try this again. Nick, you like skateboarding, right? I do, I do. What's the name of the series? Challenge accepted. Great, you have accepted our skateboarding challenge. All right, challenge accepted. But I think I want you to get in touch with your feminine side. You know, represent the girls out there, so hold on. There's always a twist. La -da -da -da. You will look so beautiful in this. So, I decided not to wear my princess dress tonight. Sorry to disappoint some of you. But we are in the third week and final week of Challenge Accepted. The final week, and everybody said, aww, come on, let me hear it. Yeah, I know, I know. It's the last week of Challenge Accepted. In this series, I've been challenging you to three different things that if you accept these challenges, will unleash everything that God has created you for. In the first week, we talked about letting go, letting go of the things that we're holding on to and stepping into what God has in store for our lives and what God is doing in our lives. Now, I would just want to ask you guys, how many of you accepted the week one challenge? Raise your hand if you accepted the week one challenge and you are letting go. You let go of some things in your life. That's great, okay? Then in week two, we talked about one word, one word that God is revealing on our hearts that that is just defining our lives this year. So what I want you to do right now is turn to the person next to you and I want you to share your one word that you have chosen for this year. Now, here's the thing. If you didn't choose a word, just turn to the person next to you, point to yourself like this and say, lame. Okay, go ahead and do that really quick right now. Share your one word. Okay. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of lames out there. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, good, good, good. Well, today we're talking about how actions speak louder than words. Turn to your person, turn to the person next to you and say, actions speak louder than words. Okay. All right. And the verse, the verse that we're looking at, the verse that we're looking at today, it's been our, it's been our verse for this whole entire series is this. It's Philippians 3, 13 and 14. And it says this, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Now, we've been looking at this passage of scripture for, for the past couple weeks, and we kind of looked at this whole idea of that, like Paul is kind of saying like, all right, I'm letting go of my old ways, and I'm going to focus and get excited for what's to come. But as we're reading tonight, if we look at the underlying part, it's, he says this, I press on to reach the end of the race. I press on. He's actually taking action here. He's like, all right, I'm done talking about like the old ways and, and, and looking forward to the new ways. I'm going to press on. I'm going to step into, I'm going to live out God's calling in my life. He's actually stepping into it and he's actually doing it now, right? So, so that's what's going on with Paul. Now, I got to do some confession tonight. I need to confess some things in my heart. Um, I, need, I need to get forgiveness tonight. So if you guys can, yeah, like that's what I need. So when I was in college, um, I wasn't like the best of people per se. Uh, now I wasn't like some like crazy party animal or anything like this, but I, I actually had like four roommates that I lived with in a guy's dorm in college and we were troublemakers to say the least. Like, like, for example, one of the things that we would do is our guy's dorm room was like right here and then there would be this huge parking lot and then there was the girl's dorm room across the parking lot. So what we decided to do is open the windows, get a three-man water balloon launcher. We did this regularly. And so there would, be two, there would be two guys on each side framing out the window, holding the, you know, the rubber band, the giant rubber band. Then one person kind of like pulling back and launching, waiting for a unsuspecting victim to walk by and then we would just let these water balloons fly and like 
just peg girls as they were walking by. Like, there would be girls walking by. They have no idea what's going on. They're like, oh, my gosh. And, like, my hair is all ruined now. And, like, they started knowing where it came from. So they'd be like, you guys are jerks, you know, like, kind of troublemakers. Okay, I'm feeling better now. I'm, co- I'm, I'm confessing. Uh, another thing we did, though, is that all the guys' dorm rooms opened up inward, okay? They opened up this way, not out in the hallway. So what we decided to do is that it'd be fun to get like the garbage cans in the hallways, take out the garbage bags, fill it up with water as high as we could, lean it on people's doorways, and then like right, right at the point where it's like ready to spill out, and we just leave it right there and just knock, 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 and run away, kind of look around the corner. And sure enough, people would like open their doors and water would come flooding into their dorm rooms. Now, the list goes on and on and on about the things that we did at our college, some of which I cannot mention here in church, okay? But here's the thing. We started developing a reputation. We we started, like, developing labels. People were like, they're the college pranksters, man. They they are the jokesters on our campus. We started developing that. Like, I didn't have to walk up to people and be like, hi, Nick Mancini, college prankster. How you doing? Nice to meet you. College prankster here. Like, my actions, our actions, defined who we were. And that's the reality. Our actions define how people see us. How many of you guys have ever heard of Judas? Judas' disciple, his name's Judas. How many of you have heard of him? Raise your hand. Does anybody know what Judas Judas did? I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. Say it. Judas was a disciple who betrayed Jesus. Like, at one point, Judas was one of Jesus' disciples until he chose an action that defined him for the rest of his life. He was the disciple who betrayed Jesus. How many of you guys have heard of Doubting Thomas? Or have you heard that that phrase before? Doubting Thomas? All right. I feel really bad for this guy. Okay? Because Thomas was another dude who was hanging out with Jesus. and, And at one point, Jesus died and he rose again. And then it says that in the Bible that he appeared to all his disciples and revealed himself to them. And so here's Thomas being like, no way. Like, no way. You're not, you died. You're not alive. Like, Jesus, if it's really you, like, prove it. And so Jesus stretches out his his hand and Thomas feels his wound. And he's like, oh, it is you. And forever that one guy was labeled as doubting Thomas for the rest of his life, for that one thing that he did, he was doubting Thomas. Here's the reality. If you pick on people, and you're mean to people, and you're rude, you're the bully. If if you're like the one who scores all the points in your team, and your team relies on you, you are the star athlete. If you're the one who gets good grades, everybody knows that you're the smart one. It's a person's actions that defines who they are. So what I want you guys to do I want you to think about your actions right now. Just take a moment and think about your actions. What you do, how you act, the things that you, you, the way you interact with other people. What do people say about you? What do people define you as? Because if you don't like something about who you've become, then you need to change what you're doing. If you don't like who you've become, then it's important that you change what you're doing. If you want to get good grades, study. If you want to make the team or or make the part in the play, then practice. If you want to get closer to God, then you need to spend time with him and pray and read your Bible and get closer to him. You need to do what you need to do now to get the results you want to get. Let me say that again. Do what you need to do now to get the results you want to get. In order to end up where you want to end up, you need to start doing things now that will get you there. You guys know what we call these? Doing things regularly to get you to where you want to end up? They're called habits. Everybody say habits. Shout out to me. You're right, habits. Turn to the person next to you say habits. All right. Here's the thing. Jesus has kind of gotten this, this kind of bad rap. Like, we, we kind of watch these videos of Jesus, and he's sort of like this, like, soft, gentle person who kind of floats around in these movies and stuff like that. But I don't know if you knew this. Jesus was, like, kind of a rock star in his day. 
He was like a total rock star. Like if he would go to another town or another, another area, like people would flock to him. The crowds would come out and they would be all over like, Jesus, Jesus. They were like, and he's like, like looking around. I don't, know, I don't know what to do. There's so much going on. And Jesus was always healing people. Helping people, preaching to people, teaching people, serving people, loving people. Jesus was around people all the time. And so Jesus had to develop some habits in his life. Look at what it says. These are, these are some of Jesus' habits. It says this in Luke 5, 16. It says, Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and pray. How, how, how did he do it? What does the underlying word say? Often. He developed habits in his life. Mark 1, 35, it says, Very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. In Matthew 14, 23, it says, After he had dismissed them, he got away from the crowds. He went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. You see, Jesus stepped away from the busyness in his life. He got away from it all, and, and he was just like trying to reconnect with God. He developed this habit in his life where he's going, I'm connecting with God the Father. I'm getting away from the busyness. This was his habit. This is what he did. There's this great quote. Look at what it says. It says, your actions become your habits. And I'm going to break this down for you. Your actions become your habits, and your habit becomes your values, and your values become your destiny. I'll leave, leave this up right here. This is what it basically means. Your actions, the things that you do, become your habits. The things that you will continually keep doing, right? Your actions become your habits. And your habits, the things that you continually do, become your values. Become the things you believe in. Believe, become the things you stand for. And the things that you stand for and believe in, your values, become your destiny. You become those things. You become your habits. Now, some of you have habits in your life that you do not want to become your destiny. Some of you have some bad habits. Okay, how many of you would say that you have more good habits in your life than bad habits? Raise your hand. More good habits than bad habits. How many of you would say, no, nope, I'm just going to be honest. I got some bad habits. I got some bad habits. They're not as good as my good habits. I got more bad habits than good habits. Like, one of my bad habits, this is like kind of a small one, but um, Ever since I was a little kid, I would, I would bite my nails. Now, some of you are like, I bite my nails too, but I actually bite the skin around my nails. I know that's so gross. I know, but it's, it's a habit that I've, that I've always had. It's just one of my bad habits, and like, I've tried to kick it so many times, I just can't seem to kick it. Now, another bad habit that I saw was I'm sitting at a red light, and this guy comes driving up next to me at the red light. I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to give you some free. How many of you drive? Okay, this is a free lesson, guys. Take this home. This is a free lesson for you drivers. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Unless your windows are tinted, people can see you. People can see what you're doing. So here I'm at this red light, like kind of jamming out to music. I look over at this guy, and dude is one, two knuckles deep up in his nose. Like, two knuckles deep. I mean, he is digging for gold up in there. I mean, it is, it's bad. Like, it's one thing. Like, come on, we all pick our nose, right? I mean, sometimes you get something going on, you got to get it out. But this guy's like two knuckles deep up there. And then, I'm not done yet. Because this habit gets a little worse. So he's, you just, I see both knuckles revealed into, back into life. And then, and then he looks at it. And then he goes, I'm not even finishing that sentence. We all know what happens. That's a bad habit. I know, bad habits. Don't do it. Girls, girls, you guys have this weird habit. You have this weird habit, this kind of bad habit where like, it's like, all right, everybody, get together. We're going to take a picture, not like a selfie, but like, come together. I'm going to take a picture of you guys. And like, guys will just kind of be like, yeah, all right, cool. Let's see this. Girls are like, hold on. This is my good side. And then, and then, and then you do this. You go, okay, ready. Like, I don't even know what this is. Like, you can't walk like this. Like, like you're off balance. This is a bad habit. Like, what does it even mean? Okay, ready for my picture. You guys are laughing, but you guys got some bad habits too. Guys, you got some bad habits. I'm getting, I'm getting, some, I'm getting some from the guys here. Guys?
you guys play hours and hours and hours of video games, wasting away your life. You play, no, it's not a good, you should not be cheering because some of you, some of you have medical conditions, like your eyes have literally bled out from playing too many hours of video games. We all, we all got our bad habits, right? But then, guys, then there are good habits. We have our bad habits, and, and the reality is our bad habits, like I joke about these habits, but we do have some other bad habits in our life that we need to be careful and make sure don't define us or we become those things. But then there's, there's some good habits. These are the habits that we need to develop in our life that we want to become, that we know that God is calling us to, these things that we continually do to become who God has created us to be. I remember a long time ago, one of my pastors that I grew up with, he told this story about how every morning he would wake up and start his morning on his knees. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing that. So I developed this habit in my life of every morning, instead of my, knee, my feet being the first thing to touch the ground, I would literally make sure that my feet, my knees were the first thing to touch the ground. Like, I would, like, get it, crawl out of bed, and I would, like, be like, okay, no, uh, okay, knees, like, that serious. But, but the whole point was, that when, as soon as my feet touched the ground, I was already thinking about what's going on in the day, what tasks I had to accomplish, what, what I needed to do. And my mind just started racing. And so I, I knew that I needed to start my day on my knees in prayer to God, just saying, God, I'm taking time out right now. I give you the first of my day. I give you me. Use me in whatever ways you want to today. God, I, I, my life is not my own. It belongs to you. And I developed that habit every single day, every morning, and I started to experience God in some of the most real and incredible ways. Look at what it says in James 2, 14 through 20. This is kind of a long verse, but, but hear what it has to say. It's so good. It says, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you don't show it by your what? By your actions. Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food and clothing, and you say, goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, eat well, but then you don't give the person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, by faith itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. I will show you my faith. I will show you what I believe in. I will show you who I serve by the actions that I do, not by the words I say, but by the things I do. Some of you, some of you call yourselves Christians. Some of you walk, in, walk around saying, I'm a Christian and you go to church, but your life doesn't reflect it. You're no different than anybody else at school. And, and so some of you need to stop saying that you're a Christian and start living it out in your life. Let your actions show it. Let your habits reflect it. Become and believe and let it come flow through you so much so that you can't help but live it out. It's our actions. For some of you, you need to change some bad habits in your life. You know that you look around your life and you're like not where you want to be. You're not, you know, like I'm not living out who God wants me to be. I'm not being who I know God is calling me to be. You need to change some habits in your life. For others of you, you have some good habits going on in your life and you need to keep doing those and trust God that he's going to take those habits and shape them and mold them and he'll become, you'll become who he's created you and intended you to be. And then it says this in Philippians 4.13. It says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So for you, some of, some of you need God's strength in order to develop certain habits in your life. Some of you need to, to start the day, the morning with God and just press in to your relationship with God so you can get to know him better and, and live for him and, and that your relationship with him just becomes an action that you do outwardly that you don't have to say it. Others of you, like I said, you're just mean to people. You cut people down. You're rude. And so you need to just go like, my habit, I'm just going to stop being mean. And I'm going to just say every nice thing on my mind. I'm just going to say everything nice that I think and just, and just say it. Some of you have some habits you need to stop doing. Some of you are looking at things on the internet that you know 
you shouldn't be looking at. Others of you need to stop picking on your brother and sister or, or talking back to your parents. Those, those are all habits that we need to focus on. So this is your final challenge of the series. You guys ready for it? <laughs> challenge number three is this. Today's challenge is this. One habit. One habit. Come up with one habit in your life that you know you need to start doing now to end up where God wants you to be this year in your life. Come up with one thing. Now this needs to go deeper. Like I'm not, my one habit is not like, I'm going to really focus on, on not biting my nails this year. This is going to be my year. I'm not talking about those kind of habits. What I'm talking about are deep character habits, deep spiritual things in your life, like, like habits that you start doing and you start implementing in your life so much so that it's not only affecting you, but other people see those habits in your life. Other people start recognizing that and going, I want that in my life. I want to start doing those things. And they see that and they, they are influenced and impacted by the habits that you have in your life. So what will your, your one habit be this year? What one habit will you choose to focus on this year that will help unleash everything that God has created you for? I want you all right now to close your eyes, bow your heads right now. Close your eyes and bow your head. Some of you, um, you're thinking about those habits in your life. You're thinking about the things that you need to stop some of you are thinking about the things that you need to start doing in your life. But if you're here tonight and you're saying, I'm going to choose, I, I will accept this third and final challenge of choosing one habit in my life that I'm going to start doing right now, today, and tomorrow. If you're willing to take on the challenge of accepting and, and living out a habit in your life right now, raise your hand. Raise your hand right now. Okay. I'm going to pray for you guys really quick. God, we, I just thank you so much for these students who are willing to step in to the challenges that they have in their lives. They're, they're willing to accept these challenges. And so, God, we just lift up the students right now who have chosen to accept the challenge of coming up with a habit to live by this year, that, a habit that you've called them to. So, God, I pray that as they go into their small groups and as they talk about this in, in their lives, God, that you will reveal that one habit that they need to develop right now in their lives and that they'll live those out. We thank you for giving them the strength to go and, and do and be these things. With your eyes still closed and, and your head still bowed, I want you to know this. There are some of you who, who have been living your own way. You've always just done things your own way. And, and maybe tonight you're starting to realize that, that God has some great things in store for your, your life. He wants to use you in some incredible ways. But one thing you need to understand is this. Being a Christian is not about what you do. It's about God's grace. The Bible says that we are saved by God's grace through our faith, through believing in him for good deeds, for good works. And so some of you, you realize tonight that it's time to stop living for yourself. It's time to stop acting some of the ways you've been acting, and it's time to step into God's grace tonight, to step into what God has in store for your life tonight, to step into and live out who he has created you and intended you to be. So if you're here tonight and you feel God's presence, you're, something's just nudging at you tonight to, to just accept that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, that there's a God who loves you so much, who wants to be in a relationship with you, who, who wants to know you, who wants to... To, to lead you and to give you a purpose and a plan for this life. If you understand that tonight, I want you, for the very first time, if you want that, to, to raise your hand right now. Put your hands up if you want to accept that Jesus died for you and you want to live, start living for God right now in your lives. Raise them up right now all over the place. Hands going up. 